Welcome to Let's Learn Railway Empire 2 together. All right. Hi, this is Atticon and welcome to episode two of a series we're calling Let's Learn Railway Empire 2 together. Now we started on the first uh, episode and went through three of the tutorials and we should be able to get the last four in this episode. So let's jump right in. Rail line optimization. This lesson is about optimizing rail lines, specifically how to optimize the revenue of a rail line according to its tasks. For this purpose, select a train of the rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. Since this rail line operates between two cities, it transports passengers and mail. These two goods are among the express goods because they require fast transportation. Consequently, the faster the transport, the higher the transport revenue. For example, the faster you transport a passenger, the higher the ticket revenue. Now open the balance sheet of the rail line. Here you can see, among other information, what revenues the selected train had on its last full tour. As you can see, revenue for freight transportation also plays a role. While Sacramento produces meat, San Francisco has cloth. Fixed prices are paid for freight transportation, so speed is not a factor here. Now consider the costs. Maintenance and fuel are mainly affected by the length of a tour, but personnel generates daily costs, so speed plays a factor here. Also, a rail line can transport more if it is faster. However, freight is much, much heavier than express goods, and a locomotive cannot be fast and powerful at the same time. Therefore, there are different locomotives. For example, on this rail line, a mixed-use locomotive is used. This is always good if the load consists of at most half freight goods. If there is a higher percentage of freight, a freight locomotive would be better, because the train will otherwise be very slow even on slight inclines. We now want to test a freight locomotive and one for express goods between the two cities. Open the research and development section. Here you will see many technologies that you can unlock over the years. They improve countless aspects of your business. These include higher ticket prices, happier passengers, and even more modern locomotives. Your current locomotive is the Dunham. Select it and let's take a look at its data. Compare the speed, tractive power, and suitability of the Dunham with the two locomotives to the right of the Dunham, the Derwent and the Firefly. You can see that the fast Firefly has a much lower tractive power than the powerful Derwent. This means that the Firefly is much worse at pulling heavy loads, but much faster at pulling light loads. Now, unlock these two locomotives so you can use them in your rail line. Very good! Now close this dialog. Now optimize the rail line for express goods. Exchange the locomotive for the Firefly and select Express as the load type. Then pay the cost for the new locomotives and close this dialog. Now watch your rail line and use the fast forward function if you like. It will only pick up express goods and it will reach a much higher speed than before. After a while, it will even show the express symbol. This means your rail line is the fastest of its time and gets even higher ticket revenue. You don't have to offer an express line, of course. Everything works with slower and mixed transports as well. But suppose you have a good reason for this optimization. Then, of course, freight transport is missing. If you can't transport freight on the same tracks, that would slow down the express train. Therefore, you should expand the tracks from Sacramento to San Francisco. To do this, extend the two parallel tracks from Sacramento to San Francisco by two more tracks. Then build a station gridiron at each station, connecting each of the four tracks. You can just build the new station gridiron on top of the previous one, but be aware that the new gridiron is much longer. Don't forget the directions for the new tracks.
Okay, I tried to do a um, uh, where you click and then then right click and let go of it. That didn't work, so I have to drag it out. So if we click on one side and then go over on the other side and place it down. And put it on that fourth socket there. That gives us our double track. Then we take the gridiron and we just... What's going on here? It's, it's dragging me. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I was holding down the mouse while I did that and I was actually doing this. I was actually moving the screen. You just hover over it and you just... You don't have to push down on the mouse. You just hover and slide it and there we go. see something. I'm going to demolish that and just start from scratch with the uh, gridiron as if that first one wasn't there. Nope, it's just as long. I think it's where the curves hit. Okay. Okay, don't forget the directions. Directions. Excellent. Now create a new rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. To make it use the new tracks, you need to set waypoints. To do this, select the following four objects in sequence. Sacramento, the outbound track, San Francisco, the return track. Now they're walking us through it here. There's nothing magic about that particular spot on the track. Very it's good. Just that you have now to use the Derwent as the locomotive. The ones you want Select to use. freight to be loaded because this rail line should only carry freight. Okay, so we're going to we've got our new line and we're going to use the Derwent and we're going to set it up as freight and one train and two That's trucks. exactly how it's done. Normally trains always take the shortest way. But by using waypoints, you can specify certain paths. You should also do this for your express line, so that the two lines don't get in each other's way. Otherwise, we're through with this lesson. So when you're ready, you can finish it. So we will go to the other line here. Uh, let's see, it's Sacramento. It's this one. No, sorry. It's this one, the passenger one. We're going to edit this line, and we're going to go um, Sacramento, then uh, Sacramento, then a waypoint, then San Francisco, and then a waypoint like that and confirm. Now we did that line and that, that line will apply to all the trains on that line. That's such a big improvement. Goodness, that's a big improvement. All right, we're done. Let's go do the next one. As I explained in the, uh, the last video, I, I, <laughs> there's a reason I've already done these once. It was, it was due, to, due to some sound quality problems with the settings and stuff. So I'm just doing them for a second time. Fulfillment of demand and production. When you go through them the first time, they automatically throw on the end of one, you can hit a check mark and you just immediately go to the next Greetings. One. This lesson is about how you can recognize the needs of a city and use them to your advantage. I'll also show you how to invest in the production of goods to ensure additional transport and growing cities, which in turn leads to even more transport. Open the city dialog of Sacramento and then the supply and demand list. This list shows you, among other things, how high the stock of all goods is 
and how high the current demand by citizens and factories is. So stock in the city, demand per week. As an example, look at grain. The city needs grain, yet the supply is at zero. This is because the nearest grain farm is too far away and is virtually unsupplied by traditional transportation. The same is true for lumber. So with the help of new rail lines, we could improve the goods coverage of the city. For corn, however, there is some supply. Here, a corn farm is nearby and goods are transported via road. A new rail line would generate revenue, but would not improve the city's fulfillment of demand until the city has grown too large for traditional transportation. Now, close the list again and look for suitable businesses to improve the city's fulfillment of demand so that the city can grow. To the north of Sacramento, there is lumber, and in the northeast, there is grain available. Now build a station at both farms and connect them to Sacramento, preferably with double tracks and a gridiron. Okay. Uh, we'll get a train station. We'll connect it to, um, <laughs> gotta remember how to, how to rotate. Like so. We'll come down here out of Sacramento and we'll take uh, these two tracks. And I think we're gonna come out, uh, we're gonna come out straight a little bit and then curve our way up and come in on the second track, like so. And clean it up a little bit so we don't have, uh... oh, wait, what's that? It's pretty big earthworks there. Let's see if we can change this a little bit. Maybe drive it down a little, no, no, no. Take that off there. Okay, we'll keep those earthworks. All right. Um, build that. Double track, then we'll take our gridiron. Well, hmm, I did that, but okay. So, um, set the directions. And set up a line between Howard Terminal and here. Running freight. We'll use the Derwent. And we'll start with one train. Actually, I'm probably ahead of what he wants me to do. I can't get to I can't get to the confirm to do what I want. I must be ahead of I must be ahead of where he wants me to be. Close the list and look for suitable to grow. Now build a station both fall. Okay. Gotta build both of them before we do the line. Um, remember this is a tutorial. You gotta go in lockstep with the tutorial. I'm gonna bring up the grid because this is kind of mountainous up here. Let's get us a way out of there that won't be quite so bad, like maybe... Right through... There might not be too bad. Oh boy. That's left side to left side. That looks uh, pretty good. Don't forget to also set track directions and build supply towers. Then set up one rail line for each good so that they can be delivered to Sacramento. We will continue once the first goods arrive in Sacramento. Set that parallel. We'll use our grid tool here. 
Okay, and then uh, we should be able to put a supply tower, buildings, supply tower, right there to service both of them. Now, what he wants to do, oh, track directions. That's going to take some getting used to. This little railroad corporation here. There we go. All right. And set one rail line for each, okay? New line. Here to here. The Derwent, one train freight go. Uh, from here to here. Derwent, one line freight go. Both run. We've got uh, grain coming in, we've got logs coming in. Excellent. Select Sacramento again and watch how the city's fulfillment of demand improves. Since grain and lumber are in fairly high demand by the city, these two commodities also have a higher impact on demand coverage. Observe how the new supplies increase the goods coverage. If it's above 60%, a city grows. If it falls below 40%, it shrinks. Let's wait until the city reaches 40,000 citizens. You can look around a bit in the meantime. I do want to see. It wants 0.8 grain and it wants 0.8 wood uh, per week. And our lines, uh, this grain line here, what's its stats? No, I don't want that. No, I want train data. So, I don't want any of that. What do I want? I want to see how long the line takes. <laughs> this line. Here we go, the duration, I guess. It doesn't give you an estimate at the beginning. I thought it would. Okay, 13.8 days. So it's plenty fast enough to keep this thing supplied with uh, less than one a week. If, it, if this is under 50, it can handle one a week. So we've got enough coming in here. We've got Sacramento growing. And what's this? Waiting on Sacramento Mason Rest. Oh, we got a couple of trains here. I would do something else, but I, it's a it's a tutorial. I don't want to go wandering off into something else.
I've read people who uh, read comments where people say fast is too slow. I totally agree. It's way too slow. We're about there, though. Be another industry at forty thousand three at ninety. Excellent. Sacramento has reached a new level. When a city grows, this has many effects. The need for goods increases, more types of goods are demanded, more industries can be constructed, and special buildings become available. Another industry can now be constructed in Sacramento. Beer would be good because grain is needed as raw material for it. Besides, San Francisco also needs beer and there already exists a rail line. So open the construction menu and select the breweries. Okay, we'll go factories. Breweries. Now place the new industry in Sacramento inside the inner city area. Make sure that the new building complex doesn't get in the way of your future construction projects. For example, you can't lay tracks through factory complexes. That's, oh, you can rotate a little bit. We'll put it right. Very right good. There. Now leave the construction menu again and select the new industry. Here you will see some info about your new industry. The rotating gear shows that the production is running. But if raw materials are missing or the export warehouse is overflowing, production stops. This decreases the utilization and consequently your profit. If the work stands still for a long time, you will also lose money. This can be the same city or any other city that can be reached by rail. So you can assume that your rail line to San Francisco will be used to transport beer. If one day the production of your industry is no longer adequate, you can enlarge it by increasing the level. This will also make your industry yield more profit but you'll probably earn the most from transport of goods. Now select a rural business, because I'd like to show you that you can also buy this business. Well, in that case, this would make sense. <laughs> you can acquire any rural or city business as long as it is not owned by one of your competitors. This starts an auction in which all competitors can participate, and the highest bidder gets the business. Start an auction now. All right. Would you like to start an auction and purchase this business? Yes. Very good. Now try to acquire this rural business. Excellent. One last thing. Open the flow of goods display. The origin of travelers' mail and goods is displayed here, as well as where they are transported to. This is very useful if you're looking for a specific farm, for example, or want to know which transport routes you could take over. Down here you will see explanations about the flow of goods. Now select different goods and move your focus to rural businesses and cities to see different information and the flow of goods. When you're ready, you can then exit this tutorial at any time. For each city, the number of travelers per week and the train usage is displayed. Move the mouse cursor over C to get information about the destinations of the travelers. So what's the travelers and their train usage? So this is, so it says Sacramento is 112, 26% by train. So where are they all going? Well, there we go, we can see the flow of where they're going. They're going to Carson City, they're going to Bodie, they're going to Reading. They're going way out here somewhere, Napa. Okay. And we'll call, call it a day on that one. Let's go to the next one. Okay, our next one, we just did fulfillment of demand, demand and production. Now we'll do changing trains. If there's no direct train connection, all goods, i.e. passengers, mail, and freight, can also change trains to reach their destination. 
They will then use one train to get from A to B and another to get from B to C. This requires hotels and warehouses, which you'll learn about in this lesson. Hi. In this lesson, I want to explain how passengers, mail, and freight can change trains. This is useful because it means you need fewer rail lines and you can easily distribute goods from central stations to all directions. Now select Sacramento, and there, passengers and mail. Okay. Here you can see the destinations passengers and mail have from Sacramento. Right now, that's just San Francisco because it only mentions destinations that can be reached entirely by rail. However, this does not mean that these goods choose only direct connections. Indeed, passengers and mail may change trains in cities and at rural stations with hotels if there is no shorter way and if the way by rail is at most twice as long as the direct way. Now, let's try this out. Now, build a station in Reading and connect the city to your station at the clearing. Feel free to use new tracks there. Then, create a new rail line that runs from the clearing to Reading. As soon as lumber arrives in Reading, we will continue. Okay, so here's the clearing. Here's Reading. So we want a station in Reading. And we have a station in clearing, and we can take our tracks. Uh, we can use the same ones. We can use two new ones. Let's use let's use the same ones. We'll go out of the left to the left, and the right. And wait a minute, wasn't there a? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do something. They aren't teaching us in the tutorial. My bad. Okay. Double track. We'll take the gridiron and build our uh, signals. Set our directions. And create a line from clearing to Reading. We'll do automatic. We'll use the only train we have. And we'll go. Outstanding! Now, so that the passengers and mail can change trains at the clearing, you need a hotel at the station. But you haven't researched it yet. Therefore, open the research diagram and unlock the hotel. Okay, right here. Hotels constructed at rural railway stations provide travelers with lodging and food while waiting for the connecting trains. It allows you to expand rural stations with hotels. These allow travelers to transfer from one rail line to another. Very cool. We'll unlock that. Very good. Now select the station at the clearing and expand it with the hotel. Uh, go to the clearing, station. Again, I think they got the wrong one. They mean this. Construction. We've got a hotel. We've got the maintenance, dispatch, restaurant, and hotel. Restricted outside of cities allows passengers and mail to transfer. Construct exactly. Now passengers and mail can change at the station. 
open the overview Passengers and Mail in Sacramento again and you'll notice that Passengers and Mail can now get to Reading via the station with the hotel. Maybe it will take a while for the new route to be registered, then we'll just wait. Hotels, by the way, are only required at rural stations because in cities, passengers and mail can always change trains. Freight can also be transferred from one rail line to another at stations, but there must always be a warehouse for this because freight takes up a lot of space. Hmm. So now where this is nice, you've got logs coming in and they would deadhead back, but now they can take passengers back. You have logs coming down this way, and now they can take passengers back. Very nice. And you don't even need another train or anything, or another line or anything. Very nice. Now let's try it out. For this, unlock the warehouse within the research diagram and expand the station at the clearing with the warehouse. Where was that? Oh, here it is, warehouse. Large warehouses at train stations allow big quantities of goods to be stored. That's interesting. That's a change. Warehouses are... Um, researched. Uh, expand clearing with the warehouse. Okay, we'll go back to clearing here. And there's the hotel. And we'll take this and we'll add a warehouse for 133000 Unlike the hotel, the warehouse needs to be adjusted to the goods that are to be transferred here. Therefore, select the constructed warehouse and instruct it to take in the goods, meat, beer, and cloth. So you can do you the don't warehouse. don't have to specify can, a quantity. This is the hotel, and this is the warehouse. When they say meat, beer, cloth. Meat, beer, cloth. Very good. The goods selected by you can now change the rail line at the warehouse. Note. The goods in the warehouse do not belong to you because the warehouse only serves as a stopover for changing trains. All goods already have a fixed destination. So everything we bring in here is actually headed somewhere. It's destined to go somewhere. Interesting. That's different. As with travelers and mail, freight is only shipped by a business if the destination can be reached by rail. For example, the meat industry in Sacramento can now ship meat to Reading by rail, knowing that the meat will reach its destination via the warehouse. Now feel free to look at how the goods transfer at the clearing. You may also need to increase the number of trains to transport all the new goods. Then finish this chapter whenever at your own pace. Okay, so... Why don't we, just to finish this off, why don't we take this line right here and let's, let's edit the line and add a couple of trains to it. And in this line here, oh, it's three. How did it get to be three? This is the one I meant to do. Uh, edit the line. Go from one to three, confirm. Oh, I hit the wrong, I had the wrong line, I guess. So the warehouse has a meat in it. It should get beer. I would think from one of these trains coming down through here. There's logs going back to Sacramento. This 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 line here. Not much going on just yet. The warehouse has some cloth. We should see some cloth maybe loaded onto this guy here. He brought passengers and mail out here. He's taking some meat and passengers and mail. 
and more passengers and more mail. Back to Reading. Interesting. Okay. We can finish. And let's do our last one, banking and personnel. Greetings. Now we'll move on to banks and personnel. Loans, stock trading, buying up competitors, personnel management, and sabotage. We'll start right away once you've opened the company dialog. Here you can see some data about your company on the left and on the right side the current company value and how it's calculated. The results of the last four quarters are displayed here. The last quarter is on the left. Here you can see which companies are currently competing in the transportation business and how much these companies are worth. Each company, including yours, is a public stock company that received its initial funds from shareholders. Therefore, you can buy your competitor's shares as well. Once you have acquired all the shares of a competitor, you can merge with them and the competitor disappears. But be careful. If a competitor gains value faster than you, they will also try to buy up the shares of your company and kick you out of the race. Buy some competitors' shares now. There is quite a bit more information about mergers, but you can take a look at that at your leisure by opening the Tips and Tricks section. Here you will find more information about each topic. If you open the tips from a dialogue, you jump directly to the right place. Nice. Context sensitive help. Nice. Here you can buy shares of different markets and issue company bonds to take out a loan. The higher your company value, the higher the bonds value. Now buy some stock and issue a bond. Okay. We don't have that much money, do we? Alright, let's do that. And now we can get some money. In the last section, you can see all kinds of statistics and company developments. Look around a bit, then close the dialogue to continue. Okay. Oh, now let's take a look at the personnel. Open the corresponding dialogue. In this dialogue, you can change basic settings for the four different personnel areas of your company. The first area is for the engineer. Your trains are on the move 24 hours a day. With a daily work time of 8 hours, each train needs three engineers. If you increase the work time, for example, you will need fewer engineers. But the quality of the work will decrease. Wow. Okay, this is hugely different and my first reaction is way better, way better than that people popping up and constantly changing them. This way you can just go in here and kind of work it out, okay. How many of the available positions can actually be filled depends on how much you invest in your employees. And I wonder what happens if you can't fill one. Do you not do you train? How one? well each individual works and how many positions are filled ultimately determines the efficiency of an area. Efficient engineers, for example, reduce the maintenance requirements of your locomotives. Now take a look at the three other personnel areas. They all work similarly, but each has different effects. One special feature is your security personnel. Not only do they affect mail and freight revenues, but they can also prevent sabotage when effectively used. And what does that mean? He doesn't really say. No. Okay, there's a stoker. Maximum speed. And we're at 100%, which means we're just kind of neutral. We're not doing any worse, we're not doing any better. The engineer, we're a little above because of the training, it looks like. Yeah, everything's at 100% here. A little extra training for the engineers, so... 
less maintenance requirements, okay. Train personnel be the folks on the train, like conductors and that kind of thing. Oh, I wonder if you can have opening, still have a train run, but have an opening in there. I, I, that I don't know, it doesn't really say. Hmm. The security. Ensure the safe transportation of freight and mail, thereby increasing the revenue for these goods. However, there are no, currently no effects. So again, if you... No, I'm not going to let's change anything in this. Okay. As always, you can find more information about personnel in the Tips and Tricks dialog. But now, let's turn to the last area, the saboteurs. You can invest money into searching for saboteurs to damage your competitor's business. The more money you invest, the faster you'll find more experienced saboteurs. Start the search for a saboteur now. Go ahead and invest the highest amount. Normally you would have to wait for a while now, but I'll take the liberty to speed up the search. As soon as you have found a saboteur, you can use them. Now close the dialog and select something that belongs to your competitor north of Reading. For example, a station. Then order the sabotage. All I see with you are breakdowns. It's going to be an uneven battle. Where is this guy? Here he is. Would you like to task your saboteur with sabotaging General Donovan's train station? This will succeed with a probability of 90%. If successful, this station will not be able to load wagons for 20 days. Sabotage successful. Quality 5, Defense 4, Difficulty 5. Don't know what any of that means. Your saboteur has, saboteur has successfully damaged General Donovan's train station. No more wagons can be loaded here for 20 days. That's how it's done. Whether you want to sabotage your competitors or not, of course, is your decision. It's not important, but you should expect that your competitors will not be squeamish with you. So make sure you have enough security personnel. Okay. That also brings this lesson to an end. One more thing. As long as your business is small, you don't necessarily need to worry about your staff. At some point, however, you'll have 50 or more employees in one area, and you'll incur significant costs. By then, you should optimize your staff. Mm. And I don't know what that means. Maybe set everything around. I guess you'd have to play with I, Well, I'm looking forward to your all's feedback around about this. Some of you who are into this kind of thing and calculating and min-maxing and that kind of stuff, maybe you can tell us how to do this. If you come up with some good plans for how to do it. And I think what he's telling you is when you first start out, you can run defaults. And when you get bigger, you better think about looking at this to, to get it optimized. I think that's what all that means at the end of the day. Okay, that's the end of that. That's the end of the tutorials. I think we'll stop this session right here, this episode. And as always, I would encourage you to put your comments down below. Uh, if you're getting some ideas about how to use the employees, if you think I misinterpreted something, whatever, put it down there, share it with us. Uh, everybody read those comments, read the comment sections, watch the videos, read the comment sections, and uh, let's share information and make and we'll, each, uh, we'll make each other better players. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you'll come back for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for our next video.